so awkward for me. <laughs> I like how we're such a contrast, by the way. Like, I we're know, like really it's so dark. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. So, today I am joined by a special guest. This is Claire. <laughs> um, she works in the same place as I do, and I love it to bits, and she's <laughs> awesome. Um, she's from Australia. Where were you from exactly again? I'm from Cowra, which is about four hours west of Sydney, somewhere in Australia. But she's not just Australian, because her mom is actually Dutch, so she has a Dutch passport as well, and she can be here indefinitely, <laughs> basically. We were talking the other day about Dutch, like, proverbs and stuff, and that she, well, learned some of as well, some of them from her mom, and that she really liked them, so I thought we could do a video about them. So, she's familiar with some of them, I just picked random ones that I used to use myself, or I know other people use. Um, she knows some like wie mooi wil zijn moet pijn leiden, which translates to those who want to be beautiful have to go through pain, because yes. Dutch. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I have some proverbs and I have some sayings, and they're slightly different. In Dutch, it is a gezegde and a spreekwoord. So a saying is a gezegde and a proverb is a spreekwoord, which is a bit different. And I think I'm gonna start off with the proverb. I did my best to translate them. Um, I had to like switch some like words around to make a bit of sense of them. So if you don't agree with my translation, <laughs> too bad. <laughs> so basically Claire's just gonna guess what the meaning is and then I'll tell you what the meaning is. So the first one is the sun shines behind the clouds. Is it like you have a good time after the bad times? Basically, basically. So in Dutch it is achter de wolken schijnt de zon, which means even if you're having a bad time it's only temporarily and like good times are beyond the horizon because the, the sun is always behind the clouds, it's always there. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I personally really like this one because it's just really funny uh, and I think we did use it a lot in our household as well. When the cat isn't home the mice dance on the table. So that's that's like when when the cat's away, the mice will play. So like when there's no parents, the cats go yeah. <laughs> Basically, so in Dutch it is als de kat van huis is dansen de muizen op tafel, which basically means <laughs> yeah. if the person in charge isn't there, shit's gonna go down. <laughs> basically, when our manager isn't there, like <laughs> yeah. we hang around in the back and eat stuff, um, those kind of things. All the time. <laughs> this is a short one, which is used a lot. Promise makes depth. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, I'm sorry. Depth. 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 Depth? Yeah. Depth. 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 Is it? I'm sorry, I'm not, I don't know if I need to like pronounce the B or not. No, anyway. no. Depth. 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 So, okay, promise make depth. Okay, so like if you can't, if you can't like complete the promise, I guess? If you can't fulfill the promise, then you're, you're owing someone, kind of. Mm, it's actually before that. So in Dutch it is belofte maakt schuld, which basically means if you promise something, you have to follow through. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. So I think you know this one as well in English. Uh, barking dogs don't bite. Yeah, yeah. Is it, yeah, okay. It's, basic, it, it's basically <laughs> the same as all bark but no bite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, so they're really loud but they're not gonna do anything. Yeah. Bluffende, bluffende honden bijten niet, which basically means they can make a lot of noise but nothing's gonna happen in the end. <laughs> it's better to have half an egg than an empty shell. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> it's so hard to describe. Yeah, like, it I, is. I know what you're, you're saying, but I was like, how do I translate this? Uh, Translate. Wait, or you're, not, no, you're English. <laughs> I mean, like, explain it. Explain yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's better to have something than nothing at all. Yes, basically. Yeah, that's exactly yeah, what yeah. it means. <laughs> uh, better than half egg on a leg dop. It's exactly <laughs> what it says. These all sound so much cooler in Dutch. <laughs> the last leads are the heaviest. The last legs are the heaviest. No, leads. Like, the L-E-A-D. Like... The last leads are the heaviest. Yes. In Dutch it is, the last loodjes wegen het zwaarst. And it's used a lot, actually. 
So like regards to jobs, like if the la the last thing you do was the hardest? Basically. So what it means is that the end of the job, of a job or a task, or whatever, is often the most difficult. Mm, yeah. So if you're like writing a paper or whatever, just like getting through that last part can be like hard. Yeah. So yeah, the last to load just make it start. <laughs> Very typical Dutch one. Um, I think you have a variation of this in English as well. So, in general, a donkey doesn't hit himself on the same stone twice. What? In general, a donkey doesn't hit himself on the same stone twice. It's like... Is that like... You would never make the same mistake twice? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Well, no, I wouldn't say never. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> in het algemeen, an ezel stoots zich geen twee keer aan dezelfde steen. So it basically means that a lot of people, when they make a mistake, they won't make the mistake again. Mm -hmm. Learn from it. Which in practice isn't true. <laughs> we make the same mistakes over and over again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we're moving on to sayings now, which are a bit different. You often more use them in a sentence or to describe something. So I chose this one because it happens to me a lot. Um, oh no. <laughs> going from the rain into the drop. And it sounds very weird in English. It makes sense in Dutch. It sounds very weird in English. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Okay. So, in Dutch, it is van de regen in de drup raken. Uh, which basically means going from something bad to something worse. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I often make things worse for myself. So I often go from the rain into the drop. And it sounds so weird in English. <laughs> Yeah, the song is backwards, really, isn't it? Yeah, it, it does. When I translated it, it was like, but actually there's less water in yeah, the drop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know why they call it that. <laughs> I like this one because you're probably going to think it's something different. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the company went on the bottle. See, I would think that meant that the company was getting drunk. <laughs> No, but in, in Dutch you would say uh, het bedrijf gaat op de fles. It means going bankrupt. Oh. Yeah, so if you go on the bottle, you go bankrupt? Yeah, I get, yeah. Bankruptcy leads to alcoholism. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where it came from. Like, that's why, like, als je op de fles gaat, it, it probably means that you resort to drinking, yeah. basically. <laughs> <laughs> when I run out of money, that's what's happening. How are you drinking without money? Well, though? I'll find some time. <laughs> Girl has ways. <laughs> <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> this one makes more sense to me. That's a drop on a hot plate. I think you have a similar thing in English as well. Uh, context. Context. Um, I feel like I'm a spelling bee. Can you? Give me <laughs> have spelling bees in the Netherlands, I think. Really? Yeah, I like, you see it in like movies and stuff, but I don't think I've ever seen an actual spelling bee. You can try to do that, but it would just be a drop on a hot plate. Be a waste of time. Basically, yeah, it's a very small thing in a really big situation, mm -hmm. basically, yeah. Which makes it a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> Selling something for an apple and an egg. For... Not much money? Yes! Okay, that's yes. it! It's for an apple and an eye for cope. It basically means selling for something, selling something very cheap. Yeah, cool. Um, we use this one a lot in, in Dutch. Um, it is putting someone in the sun. Like under fire? Like you're putting them in... No, more positive. Oh, okay. <laughs> Actually, yeah, if you put someone in the sun, they're gonna burn. But... <laughs> yeah. Not be a positive thing. No, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a positive way. In the light. Yeah. Okay. Basically, it's putting them in a good light. Yes. So, iemand in het zonnetje zetten means like giving someone a a compliment or things like when someone leaves the company for us. Yeah. We like set. The, yeah, we put them in in the sun. We give them like a nice card and a bowl of wine or something. Mm, like, yeah. yeah. So yeah, you show appreciation to that person basically. Yeah. Um, pulling in the reins. Oh, like slowing something down. Like basically, but the sentence I have for it is your kids are out of control. You have to pull in the reins. Oh, like be more disciplined. Yes, <laughs> yes, basically. So you have to like be more stern yeah. towards whatever 
the context like could be like your kids or like your colleagues or like um, if you're a manager or something and you're pulling in the reins, you're gonna like have a, yeah, going to be a bit harsher on yeah. people. <laughs> this is actually kind of an old one. Um, so I'm gonna say it in Dutch first because otherwise the translation is a bit weird. Twee geloven op één kussen, daar slaapt de duivel tussen. So translated, it is two religions on one pillow. That's where the devil sleeps in between. So like two different thoughts. No. They can take it a bit more literal. Like 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 use religion? Yes. So when like two religions clash. Mm, other way. They like don't two? clash? Yeah. So when two religions get a marriage, so they sleep in the same bed. Oh right. They sleep on one pillow. That's where the de- devil sleeps in between. It's it's very old when we had like the very Catholic and then the, the Protestants and like it shouldn't mix. Yeah. So right. the saying is from from that time is like if you mix two religions in one marriage or one household, that's it's not drama. That's not gonna be good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So basically, that's it's yeah. a really old saying. I don't think <laughs> we we don't use it anymore. I think we have too many atheists in the Netherlands to use it. <laughs> so actually, Claire has some sayings for me as well that they use in Australia. Yes. And it's a bit less. So <laughs> yeah, I don't have as many. Um, it was really tough. There were a lot of things I could have gone with. But I, I, I think I've got a good bunch here. So the first one, I've only got sayings, so I've not picked any... any a proverb. Yeah. yeah. It's more sayings. So I think everyone knows, like, if I was to say, G'day, mate, like, everyone knows what that is. So <laughs> there's no point, you know. I think but that's I, the most <laughs> Australian thing you've said this whole video. <laughs> yeah, mate, it, it would be. Like, it's about to get real Australian now. Oh, God. So the first one is, give us a fair shake of the sauce bottle. A fair shake of the sauce bottle? Like, give us a good amount of something? No, or kind of. Yeah, kind, kind of. of. So, like, get out of it what you can? Nah, it's... Oh. Give us a fair go. A so fair like, go? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So if you want to get a fair shake of the sauce bottle, you want to <laughs> have a fair go at something. Have okay. a bit of equality. Okay. Yeah? That's a... Uh, reminds me of barbecue <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> well, we do love our Barbies, so... <clears throat> the Barbies? <laughs> the stupid thing is, when you say Barbie, I think of the doll. The doll, yeah. <laughs> Nah. <laughs> the next one is a few kangaroos loose in the top paddock. A few kangaroos loosen the top paddock. Loose in the top paddock. Oh, loose. Yeah. Um, it's something. Well, I wouldn't say like got out of hand, but it's, there's something you don't have control over. No. Oh. <laughs> Oh wait, does it mean that someone is not like completely right in the yeah, head? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> like a, a, a few stubbies short of a six pack. <laughs> stubbies? Yes. What is a stubby? <laughs> a stubby is like a little bottle of alcohol. Oh, we don't uh, use that word. Like beer or something. <laughs> <laughs> so like the English saying would be like, it has a few something. few sandwiches that- short of a picnic. <laughs> <laughs> I would say like it's, it has a screw loose in the a head. A screw loose, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. like what we say like in Dutch. Screw floors have in, in yeah. <laughs> few tools short of a tool shed. <laughs> few crayons short of a. I don't know what the rest of it is. The next one is do the Harold Holt. Sorry again. Do the Harold Holt. Harold Holt is that a name? It is a name. Okay. Um... Do something crazy? So, Harold Holt was an Australian Prime Minister who oh. went swimming and vanished. <laughs> That's pretty brutal. Yeah. So, doing a Harold Holt is disappearing on something. Yeah. Like, on someone or... And do the Harold Holt is do the bolt. Oh. So, if you're <laughs> at a party <laughs> and you're doing a Harold Holt, you're just going to shoot up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use that one now. It's <laughs> a good one. To hit the frog in toad. Hit the frog and toad, as in the mm-hmm. animals. Yeah. Mm. Why would you hit a toad? <laughs> um, well, cane toads, yeah. I want to get rid of those cane toads, but... Okay, what's a cane toad? A cane toad is just a big, ugly toad that lives on the north of New South Wales and in Queensland, and they live in the sugar cane fields, and oh. they're a pest. So we get ah. rid of them. Anyway, um, if you hit a toad and a frog... 
you you want them to hop away? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> kind of. It's a running one as well. Oh. So to hit the frog in toad is to hit the road. Oh. It yeah. doesn't make sense. No, not <laughs> Why at all. Why would you say run the toad if you want to go on the road? Because it rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Hey, last minute, guys. Doesn't make sense either. <laughs> Do you know that one? No. Oh, it, it, it means... Um, um, how do you translate that tr- directly? Um, that's a shame, peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hey, last means like, well, too bad. Mm-hmm. And pindakas is peanut butter. It just rhymes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're carrying on like a pork chop. You're carrying on a pork chop? Like a pork chop. Or like a pork chop. Yeah. Um, you're doing it very badly, like dumb. Like, kind of. Be- yeah. Being, being a pork chop as in like you gotta get salted <laughs> I don't know <laughs> no okay yeah. no slaughtering oh, um, <laughs> Dutch is so brutal man jeez <laughs> I don't know pork chops are like they're gonna they're gonna be salted at some point right <laughs> <laughs> just means you're being silly oh <laughs> I'm being a pork chop right now yeah. <laughs> well I've had to censor this one because our in Australia, we love to swear. They so do. A lot. I have censored this one a little bit. <laughs> um, the saying is, "We're not here to shag spiders." Ah, yeah. I, I think a lot of people would have heard this one because it's quite obscure. But yeah, I, I think I've heard you guys use this one before. Um, is it to uh, not waste time? Yeah, is, yeah, yeah. It's like let's just get it done when you know we're not here to shag spiders. Like, <laughs> Let's get it finished, let's get it over with. Yeah, I, I think I've heard it in context when we were like working and we we're like kind of standing around and someone said like, oh, we're not here to shake spiders, let's get going. And I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently the spiders are big enough in Australia to even shake. Smile. <laughs> not that I've tried, but... <laughs> it's going off like a cut snake. It's going off like a cut snake? Like C-U-T? Yeah. Mm, it's wriggling everywhere? Kind of. It's going everywhere? Kind of. Uh, so like, it's going off like what, a cut. What, what happened, Leah? Yeah, like, if a cut, if a snake gets cut, what does it do? It wriggles away? <laughs> <laughs> it goes crazy. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if someone goes off like a cut snake, they're like going ballistic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they got mad. Go mad. <laughs> like a cut snake. <laughs> I'm learning a lot today. Oh. Uh, this next one is probably my favourite saying. Oh. It's flat out like a lizard drinking. Flat out like a lizard drinking. Mm-hmm. I think I think I literally have like an image in mind right now of a flat like a flat lizard. A flat lizard like <laughs> <laughs> sipping water. I don't know. Uh, going. So say it again. Flat out. Flat out like a lizard drinking. Does it involve alcohol? No. Oh. <laughs> Oh wow, that's really hard. I, I have no idea. Um, I could one of them. Oh yeah, do it in context. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, I can't do that today. I'm flat out like a lizard drinking. Oh, I'm like super busy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> why, but why are lizards flat when they drink? Um, maybe because they're um live in the desert and they're really thirsty, <laughs> so they're busy. I don't know. The <laughs> uh, next one is you look like a half sucked mango. A half sucked mango. A half sucked. Like you look like worn out? No. Um. A half sucked mango? Yeah. You're laughing way too hard about this. What is this? Um. You look like a half sucked mango. Because I have the image in my head. Oh. Sorry. Of a half sucked mango <laughs> yeah, or like like Both. <laughs> it's something someone is, isn't it? Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. And uh, it's when you have like really messy hair. Because you know when you like suck a mango and like, you know when you suck the seed, the middle bit, and it all like... <laughs> I don't think up. I've ever sucked a mango, so I don't know what this is going on about. When you suck the seed, the seed, you cut the you cut the two cheeks off and then you cut them into squares and you pop them inside out and then you suck the seed. Nope. Get, I've, never tried that. Uh-huh. I've never tried that. I'm going to teach you how to, how to suck a mango. <laughs> it sounds so weird. Like a pickpocket at a nudist beach. Not being very efficient. 
Yeah, similar. Because I, I just see someone yeah. running around on a nudist be beach trying to like pickpocket pick pockets that are, are not there. Yeah, so... it means you're confused. Oh! <laughs> Good one. <laughs> and one more. He's knee high to a grasshopper. He's knee high to a grasshopper. Yeah. Can I have that one in context? Um, that kind of is the context. Uh, oh. mm. When he stood next to the tall gentleman, he looked knee high to a grasshopper. So he looked tiny. He's really small. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Uh, that's all we have for now. Thank you so much for being here, Claire. If you guys uh, like seeing Claire here and you would like us to do more videos, give this video a thumbs up. Leave some suggestions down below in the comments for what else we can do. Mm. Um, I could definitely like try pronouncing some like Dutch words with you. Nice. But I think you're gonna be good at that. Because she's kind of cheating. Exactly. <laughs> she's like, she has a Dutch mom. Anyway, um, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button down below. Ding the bell if you want to be notified. And I will see you guys very soon. Bye.